Hello, thanks for clicking. Today we're gonna to talk about the second half of section 5.5, which is the sum to product and product to sum formulas. An exciting event. So I have to refer you, first of all, to either page 385 in the textbook, or you can look on the formula sheet that uh, is attached nearby from Miss Adams for these formulas. There are eight of them, okay? Uh, I don't have enough room here to write all eight down at one time. So you will have to refer to those formula sheets as we go along. I'll write the formula to help you, but uh, you'll wanna look at that formula sheet so that you'll know what they all are, all right? But the idea behind these formulas is pretty simple, okay? Uh, if you have a sum to product formula, it's gonna take two trig functions that are being added together and convert that to the product of two trig functions. Maybe the same trig functions, maybe slightly different, okay? Or you can go the other way, go from product to sum. So you have two trig functions that are multiplied, you turn them into a sum, all right? There's uses for both of these, and we're gonna see some of the uses for them right now coming up momentarily. All right, so let's start with uh, an example here. Again, you have to refer to the formulas that Miss Adams has on our formula sheet or on page 385 in the textbook to help you. <clears throat> okay. So I want you to find for me the cosine of pi over 12 plus the cosine of 5 pi over 12. Now, there's actually a couple ways you can do this. You could find the cosine of pi over 12. It's not on the unit circle, but what you could do is you could use one of those difference formulas that we learned back in section five, four. Those will work, okay? Same thing with five pi over 12, you can do it as a sum or a difference and then add those two answers together. But there's an easier way to do it because there is a formula to convert from a sum to a product. And that formula that we're gonna use is as follows. It would be cosine u plus cosine v is gonna be equal to two cosine uh, u plus v over 2 times cosine u minus v over 2. That's the formula we're going to use. Okay, so here's my u, here's my v, and all I'm going to do is apply the formula to this. So cosine pi over 12 plus cosine 5 pi over 12 is really just 2 cosine pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 12 all over 2 times cosine pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 12 all over 2. All right, now we have to clean this up. It's a disaster, but it's not too bad. So this is cosine of, these are like uh, denominators, so I can just add them. I get 6 pi over 12 over 2, and then here I'd get negative 4 pi over 12 over 2. Okay, so now I can Keep this, change this, and flip the two over, okay? Keep this, change this, and flip the two over again, and I can clean it up. So let me see if I have room to do that. Uh, I'll try down here. So let's try six pi over 12 times one half, right? Keep this, change this, flip the two over, and you'll get pi over four if you reduce it, okay? And then over here, We'll do negative 4 pi over 12 times 1 half, which is going to be negative pi over 6. All right, and now these are two angles that are on the unit circle. So these, this whole thing reduces to pi over 4. This whole thing reduces to negative pi over 6. So what I'm really doing here is I'm just calculating 2 cosine pi over 4 times cosine of negative pi over 6. Now, one of the sets of formulas you will have to use here are the even and odd properties okay, for all the trig functions. The cosine of negative theta, remember the negative just gets dropped, and you can rewrite this. Let me get rid of this here. Uh, as, oh, let me get rid of the whole thing. Get rid of this underneath. And now I can rewrite this as 2 cosine pi over 4 times cosine pi over six, okay? Remember, the even and odd properties allow me to drop the negative from this. All right, so now we just 
use the unit circle and figure out what we get. So cosine pi over four is root two over two. Cosine pi over six is root three over two. The two will drop out with one of these twos that's underneath, not both, because you're multiplying straight across, and you get radical six over two. And that's your answer. That is what this is equal to. Okay, it's equal to radical six over two without ever calculating cosine of pi over 12 and the cosine of five pi over 12 because we went from sum to product. All right, so that's one example of what you can do with this. Okay, so now let's have you just convert to a sum. All right, so here's what I want you to convert. Four sine theta cosine seven theta. Okay, so it's a product of two trig functions. I want you to convert this to a sum. So if you go on your formula sheet, there is a way to convert from product to sum. Look at your product to sum formulas, and there is one that's glaringly obvious. It says sine u times cosine v or something to that effect, and it's equal to one half of sine four theta plus seven theta plus sine four theta minus seven theta. So if I clean this up, I get one half of sine 11 theta plus sine negative three theta. Now again, you have to use the even odd properties to be considered to have a simplified answer. The sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. The negative comes outside, right? So the negative is gonna come outside of this sine function, not this other one, it's not even negative. So you're gonna end up with one half sine 11 theta minus sine three theta. And you're all done. That's what I asked you to do. Convert this from a product to a sum. In this case, it happens to be a difference because of that negative that's there. Okay, so there's your final answer. All right. All right, we'll try one more. Okay, I want you to solve for me. Okay, on zero to two pi. So here we go. Solve equations again. Cosine six x minus cosine three x equals zero. Okay. All right. Now this is well. We can't factor anything out. There's nothing in common in these. Okay. These are two different arguments. So you can't factor anything out. It's not in common. So what we can do, however, there's really no way to solve this, but the advantage to these sum to product formulas is that I can take this from a sum, in this case it's a difference, but it's the same idea, and you can see on your formula sheet that there is a formula for this, okay? And I'm gonna convert it to a product, because if I have a product of things that are equal to zero, well then I can split them all and do them all separately. So it's a huge advantage to be able to convert this from a sum to a product. All right, so let's go and do that and we'll see what we get. So we're gonna use the formula. This is really equal to negative two sine uh, six x plus three x over two times sine six x minus three x over two equals zero. Okay, so this cosine six x minus cosine three x is equal to this with the identity. So now we have negative two sine nine x over two times sine three x over two equals zero. But now they're products, they're all multiplied, so you can split them all. So either negative two is equal to zero, that makes no sense. Sine of, we're gonna write it as nine over two x is equal to zero, or sine of three over two x is equal to zero. Okay, now <clears throat> these can be solved, right? The nine over two is really just 4.5. So I'm asking you to take the sine of 4.5x. Now you guys know how to do that already. 4.5x means you wanna know where sine is equal to zero on the unit circle and then go around the circle four and a half times and give all of the answers that you get if you go around a total of four and a half times. All right, so let's come over here, I guess. So sine is zero uh, here and here. So we have zero pi. Now I gotta go around it 
four, four and a half times. That's first time around. So I add two pi to all these, which is pretty easy. Two pi, three pi. Then four pi, five pi. Then six pi, seven pi. So that's one, two, three, four times around. That's eight answers. We're going four and a half times around. So if I go another half a time around, I will in fact get another answer, a ninth answer. So I'm gonna have to add uh, two pi to the sixth. Uh, which pi am I on? Oh, I'm gonna have to add two pi to the six pi, which is eight pi. And I think that's it. One, two, three, four, and a half time around. So the half time would be nine pi. All right, so we'll write the nine pi and then we'll deal with what happens at the end. If I go another time around, so this extra half would be nine pi. Okay, but. We're gonna get rid of it in a minute and you'll see why. So now nine over two X is equal to all of these. So now I gotta multiply all this stuff by two over nine. Okay, multiply by two over nine on both sides to get X alone. All right, so now I'm gonna get rid of this stuff up here. Uh, all right, so I wanna solve this on zero to two pi and you'll see what happens with the last answer. Yeah, let me write it down here, I don't know if you can see it. Let's try to solve on zero to two pi. Okay, open. All right, so now multiply everybody by two ninths and let's see what we get for X. For X, we get the following answer, zero, two pi over nine, four pi over nine, uh, six pi over nine, eight pi over nine, uh, 10 pi over nine, 12 pi over 9, 14 pi over 9, uh, let me get rid of this too, 14 pi over 9, 16 pi over 9, and 18 pi over 9. So all these answers are good answers. Uh, these can be, this one can be reduced. Three goes into each, two pi over three. Okay, so this is, I don't know if you guys can see that, a two pi over three. And then this is a four pi over three. Now, this last answer, 18 pi over nine, is two pi. But we don't count two pi in the interval. We stop uh, at two pi and we don't count it. So this answer is out. It's no good. So you get a total of. Well, all of these answers. These are reduced as well. Okay, these two are reduced to those. And that's what you get. All right, there's all your answers. Okay, now we should technically also solve sine of three over two X, which is 1.5 X is equal to zero. But look, it's the same thing. Right, it's still where sine is zero, you're just going only one and a half times around. Okay, but we already got all the answers if we go four and a half times around. So this you really don't need to solve, it's not gonna give you anything extra. It'll give you some of these answers back again. It'll give you like two pi over three back again, zero back again, four pi over three. It's gonna give you some of the same answers a second time. Okay, but that's gonna be it. All right, so there's no reason to solve this one. It's not gonna give us anything extra. So these are all the answers that I get, okay? And that's using your sum to product or product to sum formulas. Thanks for clicking, like and subscribe.